It's not about retiring. Being financially free is having enough money so you don't have to work. We want to focus on giving you back control of your life. IRC Wealth. Take control of your finances and embrace life without worrying about money. Hey, welcome back to yet another episode of IRC Wealthcast. And since I had him for a cast just uh, moments ago, I thought I'd hold him over for one more show. Uh, David Ragland, CEO and founder of IRC Wealth. Dave, second show. I'm glad to be a holdover. You, you're a holdover. Enjoy the pork chop. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, I wanted to keep you around for a, a second recording uh, because it kind of uh, inspired by the earlier recording when we were talking about the basics of investing. And I've been uh, keeping up with a lot of things surrounding the millennial mindset to investing recently. And there are some things that are similar and some that are different, but I see a convergence. And so I'm going to read off a couple of statistics for you. And then um, let's uh, bring up a conversation on how you think the millennial mindset really can value the kinds of skill sets that the industry is providing, even if they're not so sure yet. Does that work? Sounds good. Okay. So a couple of stats to, to sort of whet your appetite. Wells Fargo survey 2016, 41% of millennials aren't saving for retirement. And another one by Corporate Insight found that 42% of millennials have less than $50,000 in their employer-sponsored plans. And here's some one other thing, and we can move forward. Those that speak to advisors are referrals from family members, but still the preference is to manage as much as they can on their own and to invest conservatively. David Raglan, what do you have to say about that? Man, those are some awesome statistics. <laughs> So I'm just going to jump right into that. All right. Warm up the HP. First and foremost, I don't know about you, but my niece and nephew are millennials. And you know the one thing I know about my niece and nephew? Okay. They like free stuff. They love free money. Because every Christmas, you know, I give them, you know, $100 Benjamin. Okay. Instead of having to worry about it. And they always have a big smile on their face because it's free money. Yeah. And so when I talk to them and other millennials about, you know, basic 101 of investing or saving or investing, I look at it and I go, hey, how about some free money? And they're like, I'd love some free money. <laughs> Anyone ever say the opposite? No, no I don't ever. Have, no, no, I got plenty of money. <laughs> I got an uncle that knows what he's doing is with his money. Maybe I'll get some from him. <laughs> No, I got too much. First, I got to push him down the stairs. Exactly. Yeah, because those guys are living forever, those uncles. Exactly. All right, go exactly. ahead. So how about some free money? Here, here, here we go. So these 401k plans, everybody wants to give you some money. So let's say somebody makes $50,000 a year. Okay. And they put away 3%. Conservative. Conservatively, right? Yep. You know, just a rounding error. First of all, if they put away 2% after tax money is like 3% because Uncle Sam, let's do the example. If you put away 1500 bucks a year, which is 3% of 50 grand, Uncle Sam is basically giving you $500 because it's only costing you $1,000 after tax. So your net take-home pay difference, 20 bucks a week. That's it. Who can't spare 20 bucks a week, right? You yeah. won't even feel that. I love that because one of the mindsets that millennials are experiencing is college debt and servicing debt. And so they're like, well, listen, even if I'm maxing my 401k, blah, 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 I am struggling. And you're asking for 20 bucks. Yeah. Give me 20 bucks. Then at the end of the year, the government's going to give you 500 bucks. On top of that, your employer is going to give you $1,500. So for 20 bucks every two weeks, or first and 15th when you get paid, or 10 bucks a week, you're going to have three grand in your 401k. Three grand. Three grand. So I just graduated in 22. And, you know, retirement age today is 67. So if you just take that 10 bucks a week, have Uncle Sam give you 500 bucks a year, give your employer give you 1500 bucks a year. You're going to have put in out of your wallet 45 grand. 
Sounds like a lot of money, right? Sure. But your account will show that you got $857,000. At the end of the line. At the end of the line. Yep. So how about $800,000 of free money? Yeah. Now do I have your attention? You got mine. I'm oh. going I'm going back to the millennial generation starting over. Absolutely. Let me call up Hunter and Jessica. <laughs> right. Hey, you dudes, my niece and nephew by the way. You you got me? <laughs> it's great though because it 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 doesn't sound as overwhelming because you can miss 20 bucks. Right? I mean, right. you can. You can you can you can take 20 bucks and say I didn't see that. I mean, by being in the habit of taking the 20, cutting it away, right. putting it away, right? Right. Yeah. You're talking about one latte a week. Because mm-hmm. I just went by Starbucks. I was walking my dog on a five mile walk. That's a long story. Went in there, got a water. It was two bucks and a half. You know, I was looking up at the latte, you know, eight bucks plus tax. You're talking 10 bucks. Give up one latte a week, and dude, all of a sudden you almost got a million bucks. Yeah. How about those apples? Yeah, that's not bad. Starbucks won't like that, but you know, they'll, they'll find their money somewhere else. Yeah, they're already making it up. Yeah, yeah, right. So, with that said, just to tweak the conversation a little bit is that their concept of retirement, which we're seeing even in the, cause you and I are at the end of the boomers, right? So right. we were seeing this in, at, at the tail end of the boomers, but if we take the Gen Xers and the millennials, the idea of retiring at 67 and a half and just saying I'm done is a concept that millennials are not, are not buying into. I mean, they want to work well into their eighties. They see some of their grandparents already doing that. They've got young parents that are going to do that. So how does that work into this whole concept and culture? I got you on that one. Please. Totally all, all over this one. All right. So I don't, I, I don't want to retire either. Mm-hmm. It's not about retiring. Okay. Being financially free is having enough money so you don't have to work. Mm-hmm. See, people who are working today because they have to, you know, they get up, they kiss their wife, they go to work, they come home, they kiss their dog, go to bed. They get up, kiss their wife, go to work, come home, kiss their dog, go to bed. You know, they're on the proverbial treadmill. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just the wheel. They're on the wheel, whether you're a hamster or a dude on the treadmill. You know, what we want to focus on is not retirement. We want to focus on giving you back control of your life. You may think today that you're in control, but really your only decision making is whether you go to Chipotle or Wendy's for lunch. Mm -hmm. Because why did you get up to go to work today, Junior? Because I had to. I got to pay my student loans. I've got to, you know, I've got to pay my mortgage. I got to pay my rent. So you may think that you're in control, but you're not. You're living in the matrix. Mm-hmm. Now I know that movie was 10, 15 years ago, but it's a classic. You think they were putting twenty bucks away every day? <laughs> I, I, I certainly hope they weren't. You know, if they were putting it away, they were good. But I mean, that's the concept that you have if you really want to talk true financial planning. Go do some binge walk uh, watching of you know the matrix. And understand that right now you're living in the matrix. You don't really have control of your life. Everybody asked me the other day, man, you seem like the happiest guy in the world. I said, I am. What are you talking about? I don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a client. He's like, what do you mean you don't have to do this? I said, I'm not here because I have to have to come to work. I'm here because I want to be here. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't that be cool doing what you really want to do instead of what you have to do to earn a buck? So to extend that conversation, millennials, from all my research, they are they are considered a couple of things. They're the most educated generation to date. And also that they're very entrepreneurial. They're problem solvers. And so a lot of them think that, well, we're, you know, some of your concept right there was based on me working for somebody else, right? I'd be working for somebody else. They're saying, I want to build my own business up so that I have more control of my life. So is there a way to oh. merge the two, the business, the dream of owning the business to have that control plus what you just went, the road you just went down, which was the wealth control? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And, you know, there's no question you have higher potential wealth building if you own your own business. Mm-hmm. Because you got to remember, working in a business, you're an employee. Now, if, yeah. yeah. And so if you own the business, you're paying yourself generally a salary to be the employee, but you also get the profits at the end of the day. So if you can live off your salary, 
with paying your normal expenses. Just think of all that extra cash that the business makes that, that you can then save and pay debt off with or invest. And, right. you know, you just accelerate the pace at which you can get to be financially free. Well, because you have streams of, you literally have different streams of income to choose from to help get rid of the other things that are challenges to your wealth building. That's right. It's yeah. kind of like that whole thing of, I want to be making money even when I'm asleep. Yeah. I mean, that's the concept that a lot of people see. Well, I'm going to own some rental real estate and it's going to be paying me even when I'm asleep or I own my own business. And so I'm getting paid as an employee to work at my business. But the profits I make, I'm making on by selling a product or service. And those are extra dollars. It just helps you get free. But I tell you what, in order to have a business to be successful, one thing that you got to start with or have is an understanding of cash and how important just having cash in your bank account to start the business or cash in your bank account when you run that business. You know, it's back to, do I want to be the pie maker or do mm-hmm. I own, want to own the bakery? Right. Okay. Cash allows you to look at your business as a business instead of looking at it emotionally. Oh my God, every two weeks I got to come up with enough cash to pay my employees. Yeah, payroll, right. Payroll. The, 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 the famous death knell for most businesses. Yeah, I hear you. So what we're basically saying here then is they can, the two, the two ideas can merge. I can have my own business, I can build wealth, and I have a lot of flexibility there. Right. And I think one thing that we could talk about millennials being extremely well-educated, and they are. One thing that I think sometimes gets missed is practical, real-world experience that you can get from a mentor. This is not something that you're going to read in a book. Mm -hmm. This is the practical life lessons that your mom or dad may or may not told you about. And so using that experience, as I told myself, you know, I tell clients all the time, I said, you know, I have a PhD in making stupid decisions. And I would go out, you know, when I was younger, right out of college, wanted to be the big man, so to speak, and went out and tried all these different ways to make money. Hedge funds, private equity, hard money lending, stock market, options, commodities, you name it, I tried it. And every time I lost a bunch of money, I'd go crying to my dad, oh, I lost all this money. And he would look at me very calmly and say, well, did you learn anything from it? I go, yeah, learn it, never do that again. And he would say, well, I guess it was worth the price of education. And tuition so, served. Tuition served. And he would very calmly walk out the room. And here I'm looking for a little emotional support, you know, help me over. I think what I got was real world information. I know? almost wonder, though, what his face looked like after he left the room. You think there was some giggling oh, going yeah. on? yeah. You know, he was waiting and got out of the room and started laughing. So. In an affectionate way. Uh, of course. Yeah. Only in an yeah, affectionate yeah. way. Okay. So that's great advice. So because one of the things I see that's converging here with the financial community and the financial culture and the millennial culture is while they've 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 grown up in an era of distrust around some of the financial industry and and why not you know there's a lot of sensationalism around bad behavior but now they are showing signs uh, through surveys and so on that they are looking for that mentor even though they want to be really involved, like to the tune of 70% have been surveyed say, we want to be involved, which you like, love right? It. You like that, right? You love that when people stay involved about their money. So they've got that part built into their culture, but they are starting possibly to look for mentors. So where do you go for that? Well, you can find mentors in a lot of different places, mm-hmm. okay? And you can just look at people who may or a little, little bit older than you are. They just are financially successful. Mm-hmm. They may be a business owner. They may be your buddy's best, you know, dad. Yeah. It, you know, it doesn't have to be to get life's lessons when it comes to money. You, you don't have to turn to a financial professional. Right. And look out there and who you get along with is a big part of it because remember you're really looking for a financial coach mm-hmm. probably first before you're necessarily looking for a financial advisor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, someone that, you know, and, and, and I guess what I'd like to extol there on top of your good advice is that find people that you're comfortable with that exhibit some sort of wisdom and together you may be able then find somebody that you'll professionally contract with to get you to the next level. It doesn't have to be someone that you pay to start. 
And I think that's part of that whole idea about millennials wanting free, right? Initially, they're going to look for people that they trust, and that's okay. Right. I would say it's it's a process, so to speak. And when you're, whether you're looking for a financial coach or maybe you have a financial coach and now you're looking for a financial advisor, a referral to a financial advisor is only step number one yes. with working with someone. A, my referral, I go see whoever. Two, do your own due diligence on that person, not only before you get there, but also have several meetings with that person just to make sure that what you're saying and, and they're saying jive, yeah. that you like the person. Because, you know, one of the key destroyers of wealth development is making a bunch of changes in strategies. Mm -hmm. So if I'm with uh, advisor A for three years and then I'm with uh, advisor B for three years and advisor C for three years, you're not getting anywhere. Okay, you're, you keep changing strategies. Find somebody that you like that you trust, that can show you experience in common wealth building techniques more than just investing. And right. you go in as an educated consumer, you'll make a good team. That's, that's really good too, because you got to consider what you're doing today, right? I mean, are you a corporate player? Are, are you an entrepreneur or owns your own business? Does that financial advisor understand what it is to be an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, a business owner? as opposed to your standard maybe corporate player who has a salary with commissions and 401ks and things. And so that they're both perfectly fine individuals with great knowledge bases, but do they match you? Absolutely. You know, are their specialties something that, that you want? Yeah. Do they specialize in entrepreneurs? Do they specialize in the nearly retired? Mm -hmm. well, you know, or do they specialize in corporate executives? Or, or, or women versus men or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What other gems do you have for the millennial culture when it comes to building wealth and investing? I, I think the first thing to realize is it's 80% emotional. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean that, you know, we always say if you can keep your emotions away from your money, you'll have a lot more money. And a lot of times people spend because of two words, I deserve, <laughs> okay? And that gets in the way of, of wealth building. So I think first and foremost, you need to look at yourself first. What are your priorities? How does keeping up with the Joneses impact your spending mm -hmm. because what you have coming in and what you need to live on need to live on are two different numbers yeah. and the difference between need and what you spend is what you want and try to figure in and do some introspective of yourself before you try to figure out where you're going yeah i i like that i also think though that to better understand your own agenda is to better assist a, pro a professional. And we've talked about that, right? I mean, to understand what you want out of money and what money will, how money is supposed to serve you in life helps your financial planner assist you in getting where you want to go. Absolutely. And everybody talks about net worth, net worth. What's my net worth? How much am I worth? Well, just realize that your net worth and your self-worth are two totally different topics. Right. Okay. And when you can disconnect those two, then you end up a lot of times having a whole lot more money because you don't put money first anymore. Okay. And with the millennials, more experiential generation mm -hmm. versus the boomers, then that is a common theme that we see with working with millennials is trying to really become introspective of what money means to them, what experiences that they prioritize, Find that out first about yourself, whether that's talking to your coach, talking to your friends, talking to your mentor. That will help tremendously your ability to work with a financial advisor or your ability to do it yourself. Yeah, and I think you know, that's great stuff. And I think, too, the one commodity that they have that they have an advantage on right now is time. And when you go back to your ideas on, or not your ideas, but the science of compounding, right, that... Any kind of movement at this point is going to just serve you so much better, serve you well, you know, 40, 50, 60 years down the road. 
you, you got to get in now and get in the mix. Oh, no question about it. If, if your employer does give a little bit more match and you say, well, if I'm giving up $10 to get 857000 how much will I have if I give up $15 a week? Yeah. Well, you're going to have a whole lot more than 857000 when you give up another $5. Yeah. Another $5 doesn't seem like a lot, but it's 50% more per week, and you're going to have a whole lot more money than 857000 if you give up a little bit more money. Yeah, and I'm going to say that that's, a, that's sort of a, a, I don't know, a highlight on some behavior we're already seeing in that space. You know, they are using tools like Acorn and, and Stash to, you know, uh, to put away small amounts of money just to keep that muscle memory on saving going. And I love that. I love that they're because they're they're enamored with technology, and if technology is what's going to get you there initially, then fine. But don't miss the opportunity to have your employer or even your own business serve you up with a steady flow of retirement savings. Absolutely. I guess at the end of the day, we all recognize out there that the idea of retirement is in and of itself aging. You know, the idea of working for 60 years and hoping to have a 20 year party at the end of that and not dying before you get to use all that money is a way of the past and working longer and staying active and go, go, go is what millennials are challenged with, but it is doable. I totally agree. Any other gems for these folks uh, before we call it, Dave? Well, I think that using technology is very good. And also I would add on, you know, life is about making decisions. And you're not going to become financially free by making one good decision, nor are you going to be in the gutter by making one bad decision. It's about the more you know, the better decisions you make and making a series of good decisions. It's not an all or nothing. It's not Hail Mary. It's hitting a lot of singles. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's running the ball on first down, as they say. Well, I really like that. And I think that's worth closing it out. Can't do much better than that right there. And I will say thank you. Dave Raglan for uh, your second show, much different from the first show. And uh, how do people find you in IRC? Well, I'm getting even better at this now. <laughs> you can find us or our team at ircwealth.com. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Spotify. <laughs> all but the last one but you're doing much better in fact pretty soon i can give this mic up entirely um i'd like to drop the mic here uh, after that but yeah folks look our fearless leader is getting better at that and i just want to round it out by saying we have original content created every week in the form of a blog or podcast like this we are on iTunes. You can come out and subscribe to us. You can always come out to uh, ircwealth.com and find original content by subject matter experts like David here. And you can, I'm getting waved off. No, I just wanted to make one more comment yeah, go. about all that great content that we have. Yeah. It's free. It's just like the employer <laughs> match. It's free. He loves free. So come on out and visit us. All right. Don't be a stranger and get educated because that's what we believe in. Thanks, Dave. 